the day I was driving uh, home from work, and I was recalling a conversation that I had had with a, a, a friend a couple, day, a couple nights ago, how we both were feeling in our hearts that we were not satisfied with the status quo, that we were not satisfied with the things of this world, that, that, that no matter what blessings and no matter what riches and no matter how high we were, that there would always be this missing thing in our lives. That, that the, the, the idea that we're missing something so important right now, that we're missing that hand to hand and face to face and, and pr the presence of God, the, his, his relationship in its fullest sense. And uh, I was just praying and, and I was listening to, to the radio and, and a song came on that just lit my heart on fire passionately for, for the Lord. And I, I had this, 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 um, this story go through my mind, this, this picture, this, this, this video, this, this movie, just kind of shoot it into my mind. And, and it was, it was quite extraordinary. It was a story of this young child, this boy, this, it was beautiful and I'd love to share it with you. Here this boy is, a very young child. He knows little about God, but yet he knows God exists and he seeks God. You know, he, he remembers the stories of when his grandmother would, would share about Jesus and, and when times were good at home, Jesus would be brought up and stories would be read. But as time went by, this young child, really young child, started going through some trials at a young age. And after the beatings, and after the bruises, and after the, the abuse that he received, he would retreat, he would, he would sneak away, he would go away alone into a quiet place. He had this special tree that he would go to. And by this tree, he would look up at the leaves, he'd look at the branches, he would look at the sun light beaming through the branches and, and the leaves. He'd look at the, the sun coming through. He'd look at the moonlight coming through, the stars in the sky, and he would pray to God. He would cry out. He would say, he would look into the heavens and at God, and he would go, help me. And this would happen night after night. He would go back to this place and, and he would seek God. And he would get closer and closer each time. And eventually as he grew older in these trials, he would look up to heaven and he would say, God, I trust you. And it would change and it matured. But his life was still a wreck. And along came a woman. He was at the right age and she was at the right age and they fell in love and they started their life together. And then along came the, the right job and he worked hard and along came the passions that he wanted to pursue, the, the hobbies. And along came good relationships, friends. Along came the dinner parties, along came being consistent at church, along came being consistent at work, being consistent with his wife. He, he began to create the world that he never had. And in this creation, slowly but surely, he went less and less out to that quiet place to seek the Lord. And though his life looked good, and though he seeked the Lord, it was less and less. And it became more and more of a routine. Then it became more religious. And it, became, it came down to him doing it because he knew he had to and that it, that's what he was used to. And his heart was okay now. 
every day he would walk by and drive by this place that he'd look at and he'd remember he'd remember the times he spent with God but he was too busy he had his kids he had his wife he had his good job he had his good friends he had his planner all scheduled out and, and he didn't have time for the Lord because everything was fine Everything was okay. But then one day, his brother came up to him and said, Hey, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay, I guess. I guess I'm doing okay. Life's good. And his brother looks at him and says, Remember that place that you used to talk about? That you used to go to when you, when you, were, when you were hurt and you were alone? You would go and you'd see God. Remember that, that place you used to talk about? When was the last time you went? And he looked at his brother and he goes, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. My question for you is, are you that boy? You had it rough. It wasn't easy. But then you created your life. And your life became better and it became consistent and it became good and you became lethargic. And you started to lose your relationship with God because you had everything taken care of. Are you that person? Because I've got to tell you one thing for sure is that God let you go through those hard times for a reason so that you would seek Him. Because in those deep, deep, deep valleys of your life, you grew a great friendship, relationship with your Lord, your Father who is in heaven. I would ask you to not forget that you were allowed to go through that deep valley for so long and so many times, here and there, everywhere, that you were allowed to go through that. And I would re remind you to, to go back to that place. And I'm not talking about a physical place. Some of us have physical places. I'm talking about that time that you spent with God. That relationship, that experience that you had with your Maker, who loves you with all of His heart. I'm here to remind you that life and status quo of this world, it's not satisfying. It doesn't matter how easy your life is, you're gonna fill an empty hole. God comes first. Your kids, if you have them, your wife, if you have one, your job, your schedule comes second to your maker. If it means you pulling over to the side of the road before you come home for 10 minutes to seek God, then do it. If it means going into the shower and taking an extra five minutes to remind yourself and to build that relationship continually with God, then do it. If it means taking your lunch break and spending it alone and not being with others so you can get that time with the Lord, do it. Because God comes first. And your job, your wife, your kids, your life comes second. And you can't serve them and you cannot serve in your life fully unless you have a good relationship with God. Because oh, out of your love for Him will flow rivers of life towards those around you. Don't be the boy who when things got easy lost is love for Jesus. Don't be the church that was so blessed that it forgot about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. God loves you. He made you for relationship with Him. You are not a far off relative who you talk to every once in a while. You are in a intimate daily relationship beyond all relationships on earth with this God. Beyond your wife's relationship. Beyond any 
relationship that you have ever had, your relationship with God should be much deeper, much stronger, more trusty, more faithful, because that is what it's about. I'll leave you with these words. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And the life that you live on earth amounts to zero in the time that you will spend in eternity. I love you guys. I encourage you to seek the Lord and to be encouraged. I'm your brother and I want you to grow. I want to see lives changed by Jesus. But Jesus has called you to relationship and you must answer. I love you guys. Have a good night.